you might be a seasoned pro, but I bet there's a few secrets that you haven't fully explored yet. So I'm going to share with you 20 of them to not only save you a bunch of time, but to flex on all your friends and colleagues. And I think you'll definitely want to show your knowledge of the last one. Number one. If you double click the shape tool, it will create a shape the exact same size as your composition. However, if you hold shift and double click your shape tool, it will create a one to one aspect ratio at the max size for your composition. Number two. Now say I have a very simple composition here and they both have blurs on, but I want to change the radius of the blur and this could be over way more layers. So maybe I want to increase the blur but you'll notice it's not happening on the other one and each time I want to change it, I have to match the values to each side. There's a really simple way to fix this and what we can do is rather than just copying our blur across exactly, I can just delete the blur on this second layer and on my first layer, I'll go to this fast box blur and select that, go to edit and copy with relative property links. I can then paste this to my other layer and now this blur's properties are fully linked to my other blur. So anytime I make a change to this one, it will also affect the other. Number three. Now say I want to select everything except these background and wave layers, and we'll imagine there's way more layers than there actually is. Now of course I could go through manually one by one doing this, and it doesn't seem so bad when there's not a lot of layers. However, what I could do instead is maybe select the few layers that I don't want and right click and invert selection. So then select everything else that I've not selected and it'll save me a bunch of time selecting a thousand layers. Number four, I have my trusty box here and say I want to animate some properties, I'm gonna have to go down through the drop down here and search for the exact properties I want. And we have to go through about five drop downs just to get through our transform properties or maybe I want to get to my rectangle path and do the roundness and then mess around with the with the transform as well. well it's a lot of layers to go through just to get to the properties you want. Instead, if your layer is closed, you can actually hold control and click the drop down arrow and it will open all of your layers properties for you to see. So you can easily find the ones you're after. Number five. Now you might have always wondered what these two buttons here do with the snapshots and the camera icon. Well, there's a really useful tool for this and really it's for comparing frames. Perhaps it's something your client sent or you want to compare a previous iteration to a new one. What you can do is press the camera button here to take a snapshot and you'll also hear the camera click. And then say I want to move my box over and maybe I want to adjust my circle as well. And we can compare it to the previous frame just by clicking and holding on those two and you can see the difference. So perhaps you're trying two different text layouts and you want to see which one might be better. You can also hold Alt while you click that and it'll show you the difference if you're wanting to line things up. Number six. Now say I've animated a scene here and there's layers open all over the place. I've got keyframe showing and I can't really find out what I want to do. And it's all a bit of a mess. What I can do is press Ctrl and A to select all of my layers and then just press U on my keyboard once. And this will show all my layers with active keyframes and all my properties with active keyframes. I can then press U again if I want to collapse it completely and have a nice tidy scene where I can see all of my layers. Number seven. Now, sometimes when you open other people's projects, you can be greeted by this absolute monstrosity. And someone's left all of their compositions open that they've ever touched in the project. Rather than going through manually and clicking each X one by one, you can just hover over your timeline and press Ctrl and W to close your comps really fast. And you just repeatedly press Ctrl and W to keep closing them. Number eight. Now, say I want to mask out a bit of my box here and I actually want it to be subtract uh, rather than add. And you can see at the bottom here, it says add. While I'm still holding on my mask create tool, I can press S on my keyboard to change it to subtract, I for intersect, L for lighten, D for darken. But what you might not know is you can also cycle through your mask types by pressing the plus or minus button on your keyboard. And the plus will go forward to the next mask type and the minus will go back a mask type. Number nine, when you want to create a new composition with your asset, you don't actually have to drag it down to the composition button here. What you can do is just hold alt and press the backslash button as well, and it will automatically create a composition for you. Now, what you might be wondering though, is where I got this awesome footage from. 
That's where today's video sponsor Artlist will be an absolute lifesaver. I'm sure you'll agree that finding the right music, sound effects and even footage for your projects can be a real challenge, but not with Artlist. They've got thousands of copyright free music tracks professionally made sound effects and stock footage for your videos. Everything is super easy to search for. You can filter by mood, the theme of your video, or you might prefer to browse through collections that are professionally created by Artlist themselves to find some hidden gems. I personally use Artlist for all my audio and footage needs for my videos, but don't just take my word for it, as they're also trusted by many other creators as well as huge companies such as Google and Microsoft. What's fantastic is you can choose the exact subscription for your needs and it's also really affordable. So whether you're a smaller content creator like myself or you're looking for copyright free music, sound effects or footage for your commercial projects, there's even plans to suit that as well. If you want to sign up, it's absolutely free with no credit card required. However, if you use my link in the description below, you will get an extra two months for free on any annual subscription. I've used Artlist since before I even partnered with them, so you know I absolutely love it. And I'd just like to say a massive thank you to Artlist for sponsoring today's video. 10. Now, if we ignore this super horrendous naming convention I've got going on here, this comp is actually nested inside a bunch of other comps and I have to go back to each one and then work my way through to find it again and then if I want to click in I'll have to click through to that but imagine we've got three or four comps that this is a part of and I want to find the right one. We can actually use After Effects' inbuilt flowchart to quickly navigate and that's this button here. We can click that and go back a comp and then we can click that and also go forward into comps. The other way is to press tab on your keyboard and that will bring up the exact same flowchart, making it much easier for you to navigate between your compositions. 11. I have this really simple ball animation here, but I actually want all the balls to be sequenced. And really, I could go through one by one and manually offset each one, but let's be honest, that's quite time consuming. Instead, what I can do is select all of my layers and change their length to be how much I want them to be offset. So in this instance, I want them all to be offset two frames. So I'll use Alt and right square bracket to trim my layer to two frames. And then I will select it from bottom to top, which is my first layer to my last layer. Go up to animation, keyframe assistant and sequence layers. I can just hit OK. And now they'll all be offset by two frames because they've all been trimmed that way. And then I can just drag those out. And now if I hit play, we have a nicely sequenced animation in way less time. 12. I have some video footage here that I'd actually like to replace and what I could do is of course drag this other clip in that I want and just turn off the other one. But the better way to do it is to either select it and then hold alt and then drag that onto my clip and that will replace it. Or instead I can select my layer in my composition and go to my project window and select the layer I want to replace it, press control, alt and forward slash to automatically replace it and say goodbye to those dragon days. 13. I have my trusty ball animation again, but this time I've applied a bunch of different effects to each layer and they all have them, but I've decided I don't want it no more. And yes, I could go into each layer and select all the effects and then press delete, but that'll take me some time, especially if I have a lot more of these layers going on. Instead, what I can do is select all of my layers and press control shift and E and that will delete every single effect on every selected layer. 14. Say I have an animation here and I want to find the layer responsible for this headline because I want to actually change the text, I no longer like it. So I'll go into my comp here and then I'd have to find this layer and then find this in my toolbar as well, find out where it is in the project. But if I've got all of assets like this, it could be an absolute nightmare. Instead, I can just right click my layer and go to reveal and then reveal layer source in project and that will automatically find the layer I need. And then I can right click that and reveal in Explorer. And then I can open that in Illustrator and change what I need before re-importing it. 15. I have this parent and child layer here, but I actually want the child to take on everything that the parent has, including its scale, position, and if we had it, rotation. Now, usually of course, you could just use the pick whip to parent the child to the parent object, but that's not gonna change everything. However, if we hold shift and then parent this child layer, it will then inherit all of the parent properties, including its exact position, scale, and rotation. 16. 
Now it can be annoying when you're creating new shapes in your comp and you create that and then your anchor point is over there. So you have to make the extra step of using Control, Alt and Home to center your anchor point and then you might want to recenter your layer. However, we can automatically make new shape players have a centered anchor point. All we need to do is go to Edit, Preferences and General and then you'll see this tick box here, Center Anchor Point in New Shape Players. You can select that, press OK and now every time you draw a new shape player, its anchor point will center itself. 17. Now sometimes when using gradients, you can have this effect known as banding and if I zoom in here, you can almost see the stepping of the colors changing from black to white. And there's a really simple fix for this. Now we can increase the bits per channel number by changing this from 8 to 16 or 32, which could help and it might help in certain instances. However, in this black to white instance, it doesn't really make a difference. Instead, I can add an effect to this layer and I'll just select it first, go to effect, noise and grain and noise. And if I just add a really small amount here, let's say 2%, it will just add that subtle noise to kind of help get rid of that banding and it really helps with this effect and if you're struggling with banding in your projects. 18. So imagine you've a bunch of layers in a comp and they're all in 3D space. Now I want this circle at the front and while of course I could bring its Z position forward, I actually need it relative in its current Z space and this box is in front so it's causing me issues. What I can do to treat this as two different layers is if I just add an adjustment layer in between the two layers, the circle will be in the front, but it will have its own Z space indifferent to where the box is in Z space as well. So I can have that positioned exactly where I want it with no worries about overlapping objects. 19. If your brain isn't working correctly and say I need to change the size of this circle and the clients come back saying they want it 50% smaller. This is quite an awkward number to divide by 2 in my head. Instead, you can do basic maths in these properties. So I can just type in slash 2 for divide by 2 and it will divide it by 2 and give me the exact number. Or I could do plus 20 and it will add 20 to that. Or I can do times 4 and it will times it by 4 for me. Now, as well as being able to do this in any property, you can also do it in your composition settings too. So say I can't remember the exact dimension of 4K, I can just times 1920 by 2 and it will give me the exact dimension I need. Now one of my favourite secrets I've actually saved till last and I'd love to know how many of you guys actually know this. Now if I select a layer in my comp and then I come up to the effect controls here and where it says the name underneath the effect controls, if you hold shift and then click, <laughs> you get a random goat noise that I have no idea why it's there. So I'd love to know if you know why, uh, but that's an awesome little secret that I love. Now, if you've got any more hidden tips, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. But if you want to learn some more After Effects tips, you can go ahead and watch this video next.